This tutorial is about the effect of inertia, and we're going to simulate this by creating the motion of a boat bobbing up and down on the sea. If you thought some of our earlier projects were easy to set up, I think you'll be truly amazed at how easy this one is. Let's have a look at what we've got on the screen. We have a flat plane representing the sea, and in the middle of it, a pea green boat. I'm not sure I'd describe it as beautiful, but it might be to an owl or a pussycat. Anyway, the first thing I'm going to do is create the motion of the sea. And on this occasion, I'm going to use keyframes in order to achieve this. With my timeline set to zero, I come over to my coordinates, and I'm going to control click on this small circle here next to the position Y, and I'm going to create my first keyframe. It turns red, and I've done so. I then set my timeline to 45 frames, adjust my coordinates over here to make my Y position 10 meters, and then control click again to create the next keyframe. And finally, I set my timeline to 90 frames, my position Y back to zero, and control click to set my last keyframe. And now if we play the animation from the beginning, the sea moves up and down nicely, practically sinks the boat, but not to worry, that's not a problem. So that bit of our animation is set up. We can now move on to the Espresso side of things, so we'll, as per usual, get our Espresso editor open, and we'll drag in the sea, and we need to work, obviously, with position Y, because that's what we've just set up, so go down to coordinates, position, position Y, get that in there. We now need to bring in the node that creates the inertia effect, so we come down to our menus as per usual, it's new node, Espresso general, and then if we come down, down a little bit further, memory. And we'll have a quick look at it. On the left hand side it has two input ports, one labelled history level and the other simply called input. And on the right hand side just the one output. And in this particular instance you can't add any more ports to this node, it simply is what it is. So it's quite a basic node in those terms. The first thing we need to do is wire our C's position Y into the input. And then we can bring in the boat. Once again, we need to work with position Y because we know we want the boat to move up and down with the C. So we just set that up in there. And we'll plug our memory nodes output into our boat's position Y. Before we go any further, we'll just check the animation. So we'll run the timeline and see what's happening. And we discover that the boat and the C are in perfect synchronization with each other, which is of course what we don't want. We need the boat to actually lag behind the C. So we need to create our inertia effect. To do so, we need to set up our memory node. So we'll select it and come across to our node properties and parameter and have a look at what's going on in there. In our node properties we have history depth, in our parameter, history level. Both of these things are directly related to each other. An important point to make here is that you must set the history depth before you set the history level. If we demonstrate this, just put a number 7 in there and hit return. And we find that the history level goes back to zero. That's because the history level is always at least one digit lower than the history depth, so bear that in mind. History depth first, then history level. Now I've discovered that a setting of 7 in the history depth works quite well, with a setting of 6 in the history level. Whoops, don't want to erase the C, just bring that back there. <laughs> uh, so we wanted a history level of 6. Now we'll play the animation and see what happens. Just run the timeline. And now we can see that we've got the inertia effect in there, and the boat is bobbing up and down nicely on the sea. All right, it's not totally realistic, but anyway, it's not too bad, is it? So you can see how easy that was for us to set up. So how exactly does this memory node work? Well, what it's actually doing is taking the position Y of the C and storing that in its memory. And it does this for seven layers of animation because we set seven as the history depth. And when it gets to the seventh position Y, that's the one it outputs. So in this particular instance, the boat is always seven layers of animation behind the sea. And that's how the inertia effect is created. It's really quite elegant the way it works. So that's the memory node. And if you need to create inertia effects, this is the way to do it. That just about brings this tutorial to an end. But how about this for a thought? If I just select the boat. I'm hoping you've had a look at the range mapper tutorials. Because if we wanted to make the action of this boat a little more realistic, we could make it rock backwards and forwards and also roll side to side. So if you have done the range mapper tutorials, as I'm hoping you have, then you should be able to figure out a way to make this happen. Have a think about it and see what you can come up with. But for now, that really does conclude this tutorial. 
I've introduced you to another little piece of espresso magic and I hope it's been enjoyable again and I'll see you very very soon on the next one.